When it comes to EVE Online, every player wants to know the most effective tactic available. You want to know the meta. The meta controls everything. It determines what will and will not happen. Knowing the meta will alter your views, make you question your reality. It might even make you laugh. And now, you're part of it. You're watching The Meta Show. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Meta Show. Today is Saturday, July the 8th, 2023. We have a fireside edition of the show for you today. Now, I know if you're like Mark or me or many of us who are living in places where it is too damn hot right now, it may seem kind of stupid yeah. for us to be doing a fireside edition of the show. But this is really just what we call the chilled out take your tie off and let your hair down version of the meta show that we do sometimes we do when there hasn't been a whole heck of a lot of crazy, crazy news that's worth the full meta show treatment. So today I would invite you to join me and Mark, grab yourself an adult beverage, sit back, and we're just going to talk about Eve and the rest of the stuff that's been going on for the last couple of days here. Hi, Mark. How are you? I'm also in a fleet, by the way, so I might be playing the game while we're talking anyway. I'll show you what we're, what we're doing if you want to see. <laughs> Uh, I'm well brisk. Thank you, of course. Yes, friends, it is uh, it is hot. It's very hot here right now. Uh, I live in Georgia in the southeast of the United States, and it is it is hot and humid here. So uh, yes, we've we've dispensed the the bathroom's actually sitting over here next to me. Uh, it's it's sitting on a bed in my office, uh, but I will not touch it because it makes me want to die when I put it on. So today, today you get tank top and that's it. Thank goodness. No robe right for the day. No robe. But for you the are day. still wearing your, your necklace of blue loot because yes. you are still a filthy. I filthy still have to represent the people, you know, the, my people, they need to be represented. So anyway, uh, yeah. we're here. We're going to be. Just so, kidding. so many of you who are joining us just got back from a massive fleet fight in venal today. And I'll throw this up on the screen so you guys can see the battle report. So this was a, actually, let me reload it because the numbers I want to make sure are accurate. This was what was going on earlier in the show before the show started. This was a, a fight in EK two, almost 2000 people, well, actually more than 2000 people were involved wow. in this. We were defending a, it looks like it hasn't gone through yet. Defending a boss Fortizar, which has died, against Horde and Fraternity and NC Dot and the rest of Panfam. This was the Imperium alongside Init, alongside B2. And despite the fact that the objective was lost, obviously you can see here that uh, we were not able to hold on to the fort, although you can, it doesn't show up on the report yet. We kicked the crap out of them in terms of killing things, which was nice. So look at that. Uh, let me pull my pen up uh, so I can circle things and show you everything. But I have to say, the uh, this is a pretty nice battle report. I haven't seen uh, a report like this in a while. Bam, look at that. 144 billion isk killed. They fielded dreads on grid. Now, unfortunately, it was not, there weren't any T2 dreads, which made me sad because I was hoping that we would get to see some T2 dreads. But they lost four revs. They lost a bunch of paladins and a bunch of other stuff too. And we came out pretty well on the battle reports. So this is the most recent. Actually, let me actually let me let me let me try to update this because I think it is not updated. Yeah, I see the four desert kill. That, even with the four kill, it's still positive. Even with the four kill, it's 150 mm -hmm. to 120. Yeah, there you go. I mean, it, that's that's much better in terms of numbers, but, um, uh, yeah, I mean, that's almost 2,500 people on a random Saturday afternoon over a fort that doesn't matter in the middle of fucking nowhere. That's not bad. Just saying. Not bad at all. That's not bad at all. Not bad at all. So that was what was happening here, obviously in NullSec today. We've had a bunch of other random things happening, but nothing that's been too crazy. Uh, what's been going on with you guys? 
Mr. Marky Mark. Oh man. And wormhole space. Oh man. It's been a it's been a wild week. Uh, There's been some drama, hasn't there? There has been a little bit of drama. There has been a little bit of drama. We're not gonna I don't want to beat this. This has been kind of one of those things that has um oh boy, how do I say it? been beaten to death over the last uh, couple of days. And we've I have uh, I can't believe I've had to tell the story as many times as I have, but um there has been a, some shakeup in wormhole space. Uh, Ashy of Ashy in space is no longer uh, playing the game. Uh, in Eve, there was some some dramatics that happened. Uh, some some you know intercorp drama that kind of spilled out into the public sphere. And um, you know, I think her and uh, her husband Teddy, who helped run uh, her corp with this, probably have decided this is just the best option for them. And honestly, uh, good for them. You know, it's, uh, it, you can't, not too many people get to win this game. Not nearly as many people as probably who want to, uh, and they have, they have certainly won. So, uh, yeah, it was, that's been the big story. It's been, it's been basically filling up every single moment of my waking life for days on end because people just won't, won't get enough of it. So, so to, to walk it back for those of you mm-hmm. who don't know, we'll go in a little more detail. So Ashy and Teddy, Teddy ran for CSM two years ago mm-hmm. are two probably the most well-known people in wormhole space. As she wrote a dev blog, uh, she has been prominent in a lot of different things. Yeah. And the number one thing that they were known for was their wormhole corporation foxholers. If you guys recall two weeks ago when in it was leaving the Imperium, the other big news of the day was foxholers moving from their C4 up into a C5, which was like a big deal. And it, it was like the news of the week for wormhole space. And now fast forward two weeks later, and let me show you, I mean, like, yeah, it's pretty dramatic. Um, the, uh, the slope here on, on Fox holders is, is pretty significant. Like, uh, you know, it's, they've gone and lost about, almost a hundred people in the span of a week. Yeah. Which is kind of crazy. It started and out. I don't think anybody's got a real solid understanding of what really happened. Now, I will say there was some, there was a good post. There was some posts today on the, uh, uh, on, on Reddit. And I, I say good post. I'm, I'm speaking kind of metaphorically <laughs> here. Um, where is it? Here it is. So you can see her blog, which, was pretty robust, and I have some other screenshots from there later. Yeah. Uh, it's now been replaced with dead blog. So long, and thanks for all the fish. There was a comment made down here by someone that kind of just I thought encapsulated exactly what happened. So if I can find it, oh, where is it? It was well. It, here it is. Can't... Darkness descend. This is this yeah. is what he wrote, and he said there's been some drama surrounding the corp as she was running which resulted in a group feeling excluded from the corp leaving a member of said group doxing a member and a compilation of soundboard clips being used to paint a picture of Ashy being racist as she has several times owned up to. And we can talk about that in a minute. The end result was Ashy and her husband left Eve for mental reasons, severe burnout following the corpse move to a C5 space, followed by the two week long drama with said group and handing over the corp as well as taking down the blog due to not wanting to deal with more Eve shit and everything. So that's, that's kind of crazy. And you know, I have to say it sucks. (laughs) It does it suck. Sucks. It does suck. Ashy is is a good friend of mine. Her and Teddy both are. Um, you know, I've I've worked with them a bunch. I've I've had the pleasure of uh, consoling. You know, or, or, or you know, talking to them, getting their opinions, getting their thoughts, especially with regards to. I mean, Ashy was is one of the what has been over the last I don't know, half decade one of the hardest working people in wormhole space. Um, you know, with regards to the amount of outreach she was doing, the amount of resources that she put together for, you know, my people, uh, she just, she absolutely, you know, went through, um, and, you know, there's a whole generation of wormholers that honestly probably owes it, especially with regards to, you know, her, her crabbing stuff for better worth, angry mustache is probably, uh, you know, turning over in his, well, not grave in his bed right now, uh, because of how much probably blue loot she personally helped introduce to the game. It, you know, it just, it's one of those, uh, one of those things that, um, you know, she ha- has said in the past and to just to discuss the, the allegations, um, the, the long and short of it is, 
there was a group of people within her own corp who were in U.S. time zone. Um, they felt uh, disenfranchised, I guess, is probably the best way to talk about it uh, from the rest of the group. They, they didn't really feel like they were getting a fair shake. Uh, so they decided they were going to, to leave. Um, there were some members of the leadership team involved in that, too. Uh, the people within Ashy's uh, leadership group in EUTZ found out about it uh, and got a got somebody into this other they had created a second discord a, a side discord uh to to um kind of plan their exodus from this group uh so there was some back and forth between um those two groups uh and it kind of culminated in there was a doxing allegation by one of the guys who was in that US time zone group uh against him there was a I, you know I've seen it myself I've been doxed several times I sympathize certainly with the the individual whose name was was passed along, but um, as a result of this, uh, and also finding out that um, that group, the U.S. Time Zone group, had found some audio logs uh, from the, from the past some years ago of Ashley saying some kind of distasteful things. Um, you know, well, which let, she let has... me ask you this before we keep going on this, because <laughs> sure, the, go ahead. The, you know, listen, we I've been doxxed by myself because I did it on purpose. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, what I think sometimes we loosely use the term docs and I, it kind of frustrates me because there's a difference between the inadvertent release of somebody's name because you didn't realize it was there or something like that. And the malicious doing it of send this, send this guy nasty grams or be mean to him or right. post this about him or here's his address, mail him, a, you know, some, some nasty things in the mail or some shit like that. Was there any so, indication that this was like offensive or was it just an inadvertent thing? I, 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 I speaking personally, I, so when I was doxxed last, um, you know, my name and email address and phone number and old physical address all ended up on Kiwi farms, uh, for a little while that was done clearly maliciously in the thread. People were talking about calling me and sending stuff to my house and it was a whole big mess. So, um, that was pretty bad. And I, I, it is my opinion that we do need, kind of need to be careful about the language that we use. Uh, certainly we don't want to um, dilute the pool of, you know, legitimate cases for things that are just a little bit borderline. Um, by the same token, the guy who, whose name was, was, you know, got out as a result of this, uh, I fully understand why he feels the way he feels. Like, I, I don't want to pretend like his experience in this case wasn't valid. Like it sucks, man. Like getting that information out, like knowing that somebody else has it, uh, that you didn't expect yeah. to have it. I, I understand. I understand. But that's you and me, man. Like I, people know who I am. Like they heard my mom call me. But was ben it on, but was on it on, did they, they do it on, was, was it done think, on purpose or was it an accident? I don't get the impression it was purposeful. Okay. So I'm not, that's I'm not different. sitting here and call it, Yeah. I'm not sitting here and calling it like, I mean, that's, I'm, that's different. I'm not I, saying I, it's malicious. It when just you, sucked. when you go out and you specifically try to get somebody's private information and put it out there for public consumption to intimidate them, to give them a hard time, to get people to do nasty stuff to them, that's doxing. That's bad. Yeah. Accidentally I, I, putting somebody's name on, cause you didn't realize that something you were posting had his name on it. That's right. different. And I think I, I just be careful Try to to keep those as equivalents because well, they're not. And really. that was that was one of the right. concerns too. Is that really only one person was was involved in this whole back and forth? Um, but the the doxing allegation was thrown around for basically everybody in this group of U.S. time zone guys who were all about to leave. So um, as a result of that, uh, uh, out Fox leadership went around and and asked some folks who ran other wormhole groups. I was reached out to for this reason to blacklist these guys. Um, most of them hadn't done anything at all, uh, aside from be in this, in the server and maybe say some, you know, unkind things about their leadership group that they were not happy with. So, um, but they, so it seemed like these guys just wanted to leave and that caused a whole bunch of problems, right? Well, <clears throat> the, the whole bunch of problems stemmed from the, well, from two things, one, the doxing thing, uh, and then to the, uh, audio files and, um, those files are not public. I, I hope they will stay not public. Um, I know that they exist. I've, I've seen them myself. Um, and as, as much as this sucks, I don't really feel like, you know, Ash, and I'm speaking selfishly here. 
this is, you know, I know that I'm not an unbiased source. Uh, I really don't think that this is worth ruining her life over, uh, especially with, you know, she owned up to it. She's, well, and she that's, admitted. that's, so this is, this is something that I think is important because I know Ashley led the charge when there was the whole nonsense with extra squishy and obviously mm-hmm. the, the AP stuff that happened a couple months ago yeah. was also pretty bad. But my understanding has always been that she's owned up to the stuff that she's done in the past and has apologized for it. And one of the things that was on the, on the, on the blog site for a while, yeah. and it's on the screen here. I'll throw it up here. It was a post that she wrote on the first, first of July talking about, you know, when she was growing up and what it was like and how her family was and that they did a lot of nasty things and said a lot of nasty stuff and that yeah. she's worked very hard over the years to, to deal with all of this and to fix it. And, that's good. That's what we want to see. Like that's, that's how, that's how this situation I feel like was different from others in the past, because it's not like she never acknowledged that she did something wrong. I mean, I'm happy that they, that's the thing, please. If you did say this stuff in the past, and even if there is audio and everything like that, and you know what you did was wrong, say it, Hey, I, what I said was wrong. I wasn't trying to be a dick. You know, it's, it's, it's nice to have that as, you know, finally as a thing. So I was pleased to see them doing it. And it's, it's a shame that she ended up pulling the website down uh, because I thought that that was an interesting and important thing to be, to be talked about. But it, I, I think it's, it is, it's hard for her for sure. I, I, I want to be clear here when I say this, I don't believe Ashley is a racist. Like I, that's pretty clear by my, my anybody who knows her, I feel like we'll say that pretty confidently. Um, you know, she, she, you know, the things that she did back then are regrettable. That sucks. Uh, I'm not going to pretend like it doesn't like, you know, I, I would say the same thing. I feel like about anybody, if anybody, if it came out and anybody found out about that, um, you know, that, that would be unfortunate. Uh, I don't believe that's the kind of person she is now. I, you know, and people change. I mean, that's just the way it is. You, you, you are the sum of your experiences, right? So like, yes, it is, it is unfortunate that, um, you know, she did the things she did back then, but I don't feel like just those snapshots, those clips are a fair summary of the, the whole sum of her existence. Right. So, right. um, and it sucks. Now I will say thing. now, now playing devil's advocate, cause I agree with you, but playing devil's mm-hmm. advocate, there are some people out here who have noted that in a number of these situations, as I noted with AP and as, as mm-hmm. well as with squishy that she and Teddy and others in that group, were the ones leading the charge to throw folks out for having yeah. done this type of stuff. Isn't it a bit hypocritical for us to find out now after all of that, that she was doing the same kind of thing a couple of years ago? Yeah. I mean, there's really no two ways about that. Um, you know, I, 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 uh, I feel, you know, and I've been involved in every step of the way. Like, I don't want to pretend, um, you know, this is anything different than like, I, like the, the truth of what's happening now doesn't make the things that happened back then any different. Right. So like yeah, AP still sucked. Like that guy needed to go. Uh, he, he probably sent a message to somebody saying he was going to cut, cut Ashy's head off at fan fest. Like it was pretty fucked up. You know, the, that, that those were all the kinds of things people were saying back then that was, it was pretty messed up stuff. So yeah, that sucked knowing now that, you know, Ashy had also said things like that. Yeah, man, that, 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 you know, the visibility of that is not good. Um, I like to at least think that part of this is, you know, there was amount of repentance that she had done. You know, she certainly felt horrible about it. Um, I spoke to her, um, not, not too long before this all happened when she kind of explained to me what, what, what was about to come out. And, um, she was obviously, you know, really emotional about it, felt horrible. Uh, she, you know, she was, um, you know, just like anybody else, I don't feel like people want to be, um, you know, w- if people do the work to change who they were, like, I've talked about this before, you know, like when I was younger, when I was in high school, I grew up in a, a pretty religious family. Uh, you know, I, I, I was a, 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 I was also the sum of my upbringing, right? Like, you know, I, I said probably some unkind things about like, the gays back when I was in high school. Um, and now here I am, you know, a two, almost a decade and a half later. And like, I've, I've been outwardly bi for years. I mean, people kind of know this about me. So like, 
I, I, I don't think people are need to be beholden to their past, but they do need to be responsible for it. And it is unfortunate that, you know, this is what the visibility of this is going to be, but oh, Ashley was a hypocrite. Um, and that sucks, right? Because that's, in this case, it probably feels true. Uh, but I don't want people to forget the hard work that she put in, um, both for me and for the rest and of my community and everybody the else. Important, that's the important thing. And I think, yeah. you know, we've talked about this on this show before because we're been, the meta show has been no stranger to controversy yeah. over yeah, the no years. <laughs> you know, so what I've always said, and I think this is important for everybody to realize is if we're expecting everybody to be saints, and I mean, whether they're playing this game or not, and especially in a game like this that is advertised as being super toxic, oh yeah, that's advertised as being like the kind of game where crazy people play it uh, and we do all kinds of nasty stuff to each other and, and that's that's how it's advertised. You expect you're going to get some of those people in the community to think, okay, well, this is the game where I can do anything so I can do anything and it's going to be attractive to them. And then they get here and they realize, well, it's not exactly like that anymore and we've changed. And I think for a lot of us that grew up playing this game, I've been playing this game for almost 20 years. A lot of you have been playing this. I mean, I've been playing this game almost as long as your ass has been alive, Mark. So when it comes down to it, it's, it's, you can't expect everybody to be perfect. But what I hope that, that people are willing to do is recognize when they've made mistakes, own up to that fact, say I fucked up and I've done this on this show and others have done this on this show. And, and say, look, we made mistakes. We're sorry. We know we did wrong and we're going to do better in the future and then do better. And then I would I, like to think that we as a community can at least be forgiving enough to say, Hey, you know what? This guy recognizes he screwed up. This guy recognizes she screwed up. They want to do a better job. They're willing to put this stuff behind them and we'll give them a second chance. And that's what I worry about. Cause I just, one of the things with all the stuff that's going on now is I feel like, you know, we're not willing to give people second chances anymore. And that's why instead of sticking around and saying, Hey, yeah, I fucked up and I'm sorry. And this is, you know what, this is not me anymore. They just expect for the Reddit post, they expect the shit storm of people giving them a hard time. So they just walk away and leave. And I think that leaves a community in a worse place than it would have been. Otherwise it sucks. It does suck. And I do feel like there was maybe a path out of this thing that didn't involve them having to leave, but by the same token, you know, I've spoken to both of them. I've spoken to, you know, some of the, the folks they were close to, um, you know, they've been involved in this thing and running their group uh, basically nonstop for, um, I mean, years now at this point. And they, it's, it's hard on people, man. Anybody who's ever run this, you know, a kind of group of people like that is they understand like it, it is difficult to balance so many different conflicting ideas and concerns and wants and needs and um it, it is it is a hard thing to do and it can definitely drain a person so take that on top of the stuff that happened more recently and i'm not surprised that they are that they're gonna they're gonna step away so um i hope it's not forever yeah. i really i i think that um you know i don't i don't feel i i hope people will remember things that the, you know the the hard work that was done um because really there, i mean there are so many people who who owe a good bit of you know the the enjoyment they've gotten out of this game out of you know they owe that to the work that she did um you know and the effort that she put into it so it sucks stuff like this always sucks uh right. with regards to the well, let's talk about let's talk about the fallout right because right. i mean think about it so fox holders had almost 300 people at its height it still has about 230 folks in the corporation yeah. they just moved to a c5 I think they would be probably in the top five, if not the top three wormhole corporations now, right? I mean, am I, I wrong by, about that? By size, they're probably in the top 10 for sure. Um, okay. Uh, the, hang on one second, I'm gonna look something up real quick. They are, um, we're certainly the biggest uh, low class corp for the longest time. Um, they were. That means the type of wormhole. Right, sorry. Not how much uh, class they have. Yeah. C4 and below. Uh, I, I'm almost positive they were the biggest C4 and below group um, outside of maybe, maybe like no vacancies. It was, was really big. Um, maybe Odin's call, but you know, some of those C2 groups that have null six statics are pretty big, but uh, you know, this is going to be rough for that group going forward. Um, you know, so much of that corp is 
was built around her, you know, her, she was at the center of it. I mean, she ran everything. Uh, you know, she had a, you know, a leadership group, but uh, you know, almost everything, the bucks really did stop with Ashy for a lot of things that happened in that corp. So, so, so they just moved to a C5 and as, as one of the things C5s are a little harder to, to defend than a C4 is right. It Which is, is why nobody evicts anybody from a C4 because it's just a pain in the ass to do it. Well, plenty of people have been evicted from C4s. It is a okay. little bit more, it, it actually is a little bit trickier to do hole control in a C4 uh, because you have two different statics. Uh, so you have to do twice the hole control instead of just with a C5, you've only got the one. So you can just guard that one hole. Uh, and as long as you're controlling that one hole, uh, you're usually pretty okay. Um, but with uh, moving to the high class, I mean, so much of it depends on, I mean, it's just like anything else, right? If you are inactive or you show signs of, of you know, some kind of long-term weakness, people are going to start eyeing up your stuff, right? Um, yes, Mark did say whole. I did no. say whole. Yes, thank you, Miss Brisker Ball. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, I, you know, it's it is, um, it's going to be tough for them for sure. Uh, you know, some of their folks have um, have left that group over the last couple of days just to try and get away. You know. There are a lot of really good people in that corporation and who have been in that corporation who knew nothing about any of this and had nothing to do with it. Uh, they're just normal line people. Uh, and a lot of them are, get, are getting a lot of grief right now just because of their association with her and with, you know, the, the leadership in, in that group and everybody who was involved in it. And that's not fair. I don't feel like. Um, and so one of the things I told her was um, that I was going to try and do, you know, as much as I could with, you know, my group, um, and you know, with the groups who are, uh, you know, still kind of friendly with those folks that, um, you know, we, we, we would try and find, find places for those people to be and, and continue to work, uh, for, for, you know, to make their, their game life a little bit more relaxing and not so, you no know, so toxic right now. So, uh, with regards to the blog, uh, one of the things I've, I've heard a lot of complaints about is that the, um, uh, the, um, those resources are, are not there anymore, which is true. I am going to be putting together uh, on my Alliance's website, turbofeederglory.com, some replacements. They're not going to be one-to-one -one copies of the stuff that Ashley had up. Uh, I, she's actually, Ashley asked me not to do that, which is fair within her right to do so. So we're going to replace the, the crab fits for C5s, C6s, C4s. Uh, we're going to replace all the bookmark stuff. We're going to replace the, um, you know, a lot of the wormhole life guides, stuff like that with, uh, you know, maybe some updated versions, maybe some that are a little bit different stuff that we've just done in my group. So uh, hopefully folks can use that as a resource going forward uh, and they don't feel like they're just kind of shit of luck. So, because a lot of that stuff was used a ton. People, I mean, hell, I used it almost every time I went to go crab and forgot where the bookmarks need to be because I have three brain cells kicking around up here. Uh, so it, that'll be, it'll be a nice resource for folks to have. So um, I don't feel like, you know, that is a suitable replacement to her. I mean, she did a lot of extra work on the side, but uh, we're going to try our best to, to fill that hole. So, I mean, and, and, and that's fair. And look, I, I understand that there are plenty of people out there who are going to argue that there's some kind of a dual standard or a double standard that we're being nice to Ashy with all of the stuff going on where we weren't that nice to other people. But I will say this, at least from my perspective and my tenure on this show, we have done our best to, give everybody the benefit of the doubt, not rush to judgment. I, we do not do witch hunts on this show. I've never mm -hmm. done that. In fact, we're usually the, the, the receiving end of the witch hunt, not the, the creating one. We'll bring up stuff and talk about it because it's in the news. And this has been a big deal for wormhole space for the last week or so since the first of July or so. So everybody's been talking about it behind the scenes. It hasn't hit Reddit, but I'll tell you that's largely, I have to give credit to the wormhole community. You guys keep your shit together. Yeah, You don't air your dirty laundry in public until way after it's done, which is way different than NullSec. If this had been a NullSec situation, this stuff would have leaked years ago. It would have been out instantly. And it, I will say that that's, that's on us, but I think it's also because that's just the nature of the way Null is, and we tend to do that kind of a thing. So regardless of what, what you think about Ashy, what you think about Teddy, what you think about other people in the past that they've gone after and vice versa, the bottom line is this is a shitty situation. 
and it's cost us two pretty well-known players, among other things, including ho- hopefully not their court, but it's going to cause problems for those players that are still around and doing that. Yeah. And the thing is, a lot of this, all of this seems to have started around a couple of folks in that corp that wanted to leave and did so in a way that pissed off others and then it caused all kinds of drama. And that wasn't the only drama of folks leaving that happened in the last two weeks. And I want to highlight this as well because there was a situation with Worthless Care Bears. So if you guys are not aware, Worthless Care Bears was a, is right now a member of Init. They joined Init uh, a couple of weeks ago. Mm. They had started out their career in Slice. They went to, to test. They went to Hort. So I have to say, they made two pretty bad decisions. Slice is fine. They made two pretty bad decisions being in test and then in Hort. Just saying. But they managed to stick. They stuck through test the entire war. They, they joined way before the war, back when we were friends. They left way after the war ended. And they joined Horde with, with, I guess, the rest of all of the test people that left. They stayed in Horde until June 29th. So what happened? Apparently, they started talking about wanting to leave. There was a timeline that was posted on Reddit that they, they started talking about wanting to leave around June 17th. They had a meeting on the 24th of June. They were, they planned on the 20th. They told everybody on the 27th, we're, we've decided we're leaving Horde. We're going to move to Init. They were planning on moving out by July 8th, which is today. But Gobbins found out they were leaving through a hissy fit, declared them kill on sight, and told them, yeah. you've got basically like three hours to move or 20, 21 hours to move instead of like two weeks. Wow. And all because they were going to the initiative. And I think it's it's funny to me because this happens all the time. And I, you know, I I I just moved from in it to goons. Others have moved from in it to goons in the past. People move from groups all the time. It's easy when you're going blue to blue, but when you go from an organization that is, you know, arguably at war, and I mean it's very loose because the war has been we've been having fights in the north, but they're not it doesn't it doesn't feel like wartime right now, at least not to me. And maybe it's because I'm in the Imperium and we're not technically fighting. And in it and B2 are really doing a lot of the fighting up north. But the whole idea of a group of people are like, yeah, I don't think we want to be here anymore. And they've been with you for a long time, and there's no bad blood or anything, as far as I could tell. Like there wasn't, they weren't AWOXing people. They weren't causing all kinds of problems. They hadn't been spying or anything. So why be a dick to them on the way out the door? Like, I don't understand that whole thing. Yeah. All right. You're going to the bad guys, but so what? Fine. We'll be shooting you. It's 300 dudes. It's not like it was some mega. It wasn't like karma fleet leaving. It was, it was 300 guys. And that's, that's, that's maybe 50 real people, you know? So what's the issue? Why, why, why be a jackass and give them no time to move? I don't understand that. And I've never understood that. It's really dumb. It's actually a really, really stupid thing to do. Because you don't really accomplish that much from it. Like the all, all you're really accomplishing is um like forcing guys to maybe have to ask the safety some of the stuff that they would have tried to expel otherwise, right? Where what you're getting as a return on that investment that you've made is a bunch of people who think that you're just a dick now. Like I have left people in my group in people who I didn't like for way too long just because you know, I wanted them to at least give the the benefit of of trying to get their stuff out, right? And it's a little right. bit different wormhole space because there's not asset safety and like it really would be a dick move if I didn't let people go. But right at the end of the day, it, it, it's a fucking video game. Like I, it no, I don't. Be, like, sometimes I get annoyed like, when with the whole it's the video game thing because I understand you want to win and stuff. And and I mean, look, and I, I see. Uh, Final Flash says, wasn't the issue they were using blue ACLs to deploy to a front line against fraternity, basically using fraternity beacons. That's, I mean, I, maybe that's an issue, but hey, the last time I checked, Horde and fraternity are not the same thing. It's not like they that's were using true. Horde stuff to deploy against Horde. Yeah. Fraternity, I, I, Gobbins has said before in the past that they're not, their fraternity is not their friend. They're not, they're not best friends with them. As far as I know, they're not blue. Maybe they're like 0.5. Now, I guess I should check my Horde alt to see if they fraternity certainly didn't is blue show up or not. But to help defend that fort and scark on the other night hey that's another thing we can talk about after we get done with this but it's like you know at the end of the day 
just let them leave. And Carneros is 10,000% right. You're training other groups to not tell you when they're leaving, to just move mm-hmm. all their shit out and then mention, oh, by the way, oh, bye, we're gone. We moved all of our shit out already because we couldn't trust you yeah. uh, to let us go without being a dick about it. Like, come on. I don't, I don't, that just, that doesn't make any lot of sense to me. But ScarCon, you want to talk about ScarCon? Yeah, I'll ScarCon. I was getting updates on that one all night. Oh, Goblin's precious. Hodgman His is so precious weird, is so under weird. attack. Now yeah. I have to say I was on I was on the Pro God Legend fleet that ref the Scarcon Fort. So for those of you who are unaware, Pochvin. Mm. Pochvin is the greatest place in the world, according to one horde leader named Gobbins. <laughs> he loves it. It is his precious. He thinks it's the greatest place in the game. It's where they spend so much of their time and energy. They spend so much time working on figuring out ways to defend the space, and they've got structures. They've got structures and they've got all that stuff in there and it's wonderful and they love it and they spend all their time and it's their, they, they rub it. And then what happens? We come in there to fuck with it and uh, we do. So unfortunately, poor Gobbins and his precious is, is almost dead. We were, we put the thing into, uh, we shield refed it on Thursday. We put it into a hull yesterday and a big fight where fraternity showed up and we had a good fight over it, but whoa, I mean, the whole timers tomorrow, what's going to happen? I don't know. I do love it when these things, these timers fall on weekends because you know, the, the, that's when you get to really see like stuff happening. Who can get the numbers, Uh, right? Yeah. You absolutely get the numbers. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I don't, I, the, when I, the, when I saw the BR the other day, I saw like 50 tunes from, from fraternity and now I, I might be wrong about that. That may have changed over time. Or maybe I just saw the wrong BR, but like, I think my group could probably put together more than 50 tunes. If we need to defend a structure, like I feel like not you, if you put out all those tunies and, and you make iskies oh with your tunies, God, I swear to God and your nitties and your thannies, you fucking null guys. I don't understand yeah. what this is. This has to be a cultural thing. Because I said that too, Mifune, Mifune made fun of me one time too. You know what it's like to be made fun of by Mifune sword God and your desis. Feel good. Oh my gosh! Shut the fuck up. I, listen, I have to say because I, I when, before I got to Eve, I played other MMOs, and that was a comments. Roll you roll a tune. I'm gonna roll a new tune. Yeah, but here tune. that is. Yes, yeah, so they're No, no, you don't do that. They're chars. 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 Yes. Yes. God damn it! Asher Elias is making fun of me. Wow, this sucks. You just got and screwed. Asher just I'm, came down on you. I'm, good. I got, I, got, I got. I've been boomed, dude. Marky anyway. Mark. All I'm saying so anyway, is that so Scarcon is tomorrow. That's going to be fun. We'll see who yeah, shows it up. Be fun. It'll be really interesting to see. I mean, Pochfin is such a unique space. Like, I do like. This is not applicable. I feel like to the entire game. Like you couldn't you couldn't expand these mechanics as seamlessly as they've done so in Pochfin. But the fact that you can't anchor new structures in Pochfin is so like that's such a cool mechanic because it forces every engagement to be like life or death. Right, like when the Nalvula fort was going down, uh, you know, and folks were showing up for that. Like that is one of the like you can't. That was fun too. Yeah, you can't recover the asset once it's gone. That's so cool. It's one of the. I mean, not to. I'm just saying this about wormhole space, but I mean, wormhole space is kind of the same way, right? Where if you lose a structure like that, you can probably anchor. I mean, you can never anchor another structure, but it's not going to be the same way that it was before, right? Like you're not going to have the same stuff. Unless you really like put the work into it, and it's even more so in Pochvin, because Pochvin you can't anchor it. Period. Once it's done, it's done. That's legacy shit, man. So yeah, it's it's extremely cool that that's uh, you know, I my my boy Drake oh, yeah. Idon. Shout out to Drake uh, from uh, Castle Kickers. He was telling me all about it throughout the uh, the entire night, and uh, he was pretty excited about. It. So yeah, I can't wait to see how it goes. I might show up there tomorrow night. Maybe be, be listen. I, I hopefully I will be able to do it. Uh, usually Sunday is my no Eve day, uh, but I think I might be able to swing it because it's might late enough to, in the evening. So I was gonna say, we may have talked to Miss Bruce Grabal about that one. See if we can. Uh, you got to be all right. So the other thing, just to bit. point out, Mrs. Brisk's birthday is on Tuesday. So go on. because she has to work on Tuesday, we are celebrating her birthday tomorrow. Actually, it starts oh. tonight at six p.m. and runs through six p.m. tomorrow. So. Happy birthday, Mrs. Brisk. You're doing 24 she hours is, of birthday celebration? She gets her she gets her 24 hours of birthday celebration. Okay, and right. unfortunately, the worst thing for her is 
she is a day older than me. Her birthday is on Tuesday. My birthday is on Wednesday. But I don't care about my birthday because I hate being reminded that yeah. I'm old. So I was, she can't be more than like 27, 28 years old, right? Right. Like, All right. And I'm in my 80s. Sounds, sounds so right. obviously, yeah. you know, there's something weird going on here. That is so true. Well, you played Eve and she didn't. That's, that's true. That's what this, that's where the gray the, comes from. It's from yeah, Eve. the youthful glow. Mm. So we're going to spend tomorrow. Uh, she gets everything she wants. I have to cook for her. And we're going to do some all kinds of stuff. Oh, I, I want man. to cook for her. We're going to have a good day. We're going to make sure she gets pampered and treated well. <laughs> So anyway, good, good recovery, <laughs> right? Exactly. So, so that's going to be tomorrow, but I'm hoping that by the end of the day, after she's had a lovely time and I have put her up into bed, I'll be able to come downstairs and help kill the Scarcon fort because Other I don't know that, how huh? much stuff is going to drop from that. Cause I can't, I mean, I would imagine that there have been a lot of horde people over the last couple of years since Potchin became a thing that have used that as their ratting place. And maybe they're not mm -hmm. still there. So it could be yeah. a nice, I didn't say I have to cook for this hoe, honey. Stop it. <laughs> I said, I'm going to cook for you. Yes, I will get Mrs. Bl Brist drunk so I can play Eve. But I'm looking forward to seeing that this fight pulls off. Because I'll tell you, if, if this is this is not the first time we've gone after the Scarcon <laughs> Fort. And what are you laughing at? Asher said, sound like Brisk plans to get Mrs. Brisk drunk so I can well, play Eve. I mean, why not, right? <laughs> why not? That's it. Once I lick her up and dump her in bed, I go downstairs with my with the boys. Uh, there's and a there's a bottle of, of Farniente Chardonnay <laughs> in the fridge that's chilling oh right God. now for her. The, the 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 bottom mm. line is the Scarcon Fort has been a big target. It's one of a handful of forts that are left. I yeah. think Fraternity's got one. I think there's one other neutral fort that's still in Potchfin. There aren't that many left. It's 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 got cat it's got legacy caps in it we look we killed three faxes on the on, in the fight the other day so there's still caps there so i think it's going to turn into one of these situations where if horde does not show up with massive ridiculous numbers tomorrow i will be very very surprised yeah. even if even though it's a whole timer it's in potchman it's like wormhole space you can't not fight it you gotta you gotta but try it's so to easy the to thing. get there is the problem like that's, that's the different. other thing right it's so easy to get there it's a pain right. in the ass but it's it's easy but it just requires mm -hmm. logistics that's all right Right. But so. you can do it. Like you can absolutely flood the system with tons of numbers. Like that is that is possible. And I yeah. guess that's what the difference between that and wormhole be the wormhole space are still mass limited, but there are so many ways into Poshpin. They're absolutely right. gonna flood that system if they want to. If they don't care about it, then you won't see them show up. But if they want to do it, they they can do it. Like the, the mechanics are there. I'm I'm now. excited, man. I love seeing stuff like that get shot. I, I listen me too. I'm, I'm very much looking forward to it. So next up, what else? I, I, so, all right. All right. I'm going to be controversial. I'm going to be controversial and you guys are going to get mad at me and you're going to call me a shill and you're going to give me a hard time, but I'm going to do it anyway because fuck you. This is my show. I can do what I want. So yesterday, July the 7th, CCP announced the 20th anniversary collector's edition and what's in it. And it's we had been bad. told we had had, we had had this leaked out to us about a week ago mm -hmm. that there was going to be a Fado plushie in it. There it is right here. It's so cute. I can't fucking get over this. Fado plushie. <laughs> now for those who wonder, what is this thing? Can, do you want to explain what that is, Mark? Because, I honestly, I did not know until the other day. I, I okay. it was some inside joke that, that they included in an item description or something. And I didn't know anything about it. until. So in fact, I didn't know anything about it until right. after they released this. So when I thought, when I saw that they released this, my first thought was that it was a joke. My second thought was that somebody was high. Like I was like, what now, the fuck are they now, talking? But about? I'll tell you, I knew that it wasn't a joke or high because there had been a campaign to get these plushies made. And it was a huge deal at last fan fest because one of the items to be auctioned was a crocheted one of these and it went for hundreds of dollars. Wow. Okay. So this is one of these, it's one of these, it's, it's an in-game item called a Fado. It's some kind of weird space worm thing. Some yeah. of the only indigenous life to the new Eden galaxy. And some people like to throw, throw one in their cargo hold the way that those of us in Karma Fleet like to put exotic dancers mail in our, in our cargo holds. So just like a little yeah. jokey thing that we do. 
Okay. okay yeah, yeah. So they announced this last week, and then they put redacted with a bunch of the other stuff that was included <laughs> in this pack, hated it which pissed everyone they off. Hated it, dude. Because they're That's like, so "Why funny. are you not telling me what's in the pack? You guys are bullshit." So they announce. They do a timeline thing, a countdown to the release date of when you can pre-order the thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what is included in this? So they are including a bunch of cool stuff. They, they're pricing at $174.99. Okay. $174.99. That's a lot of money. That's almost $200. Yeah. They are including an, a Megatron ship model. You will be hard cool. pressed to find any Megatron ship models anywhere. This was not one of the ships that Mixed Dimensions put out when they were doing ship models a couple of years ago. There is one. I think there was a Megatron done maybe 15 years ago. It is hard to find. If you can find them, they are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars. That's a great, that's a ship model. I love ship models. I'll spend 200 bucks on a ship model, period. Mm -hmm. You get the plushie. You get a premium Megatron blueprint poster. Then you get a Megatron art print from Lloyd George. Lloyd George has been doing water watercolor prints of Eve ships for a while. He's an officially licensed Eve partner. These are expensive prints. Mm -hmm. And I will go through all of this in a little while because one of the biggest issues that I've heard had with people bitching is, oh, this is there's nothing in it that's worth the money. You guys are batshit if you don't think the stuff in here is worth the money. Okay. Mm -hmm. This blueprint, you get the print from Lloyd George, you get the soundtrack on a CD. All right, I know some of you children don't know what a CD is. You've never had one before. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. actually really excited about this. This is going to be very so cool. So go spend $10 and get yourself a CD player and you can listen to the Eve music. It'll be fine. A bunch of pins. Eh, who cares about pins? Pins are all right. Amber. For those of you who don't know who the fuck Tambor is, and you Bro, should. let's go. Because... Not only was Tambor a two-term CSM member back on four and five, he is also one of the absolute best yes. Eve drawing people of yes. all time. Yes. One of the greatest. Every Calderi Prime Pony Club is the name that he uses that, that is say, used on Twitch. That's the thing you they have don't know seen is, them. They don't know who Tambor is. It's right. Calderi Prime Pony Club. He's a fucking Correct. G, dude. The, He's legit. The ridiculously good skins that are posted every other month on Reddit. Who do you think makes them him? This guy yeah. should be hired by CCP. He should be in the art room doing skins 24 hours a day. His skins are the best. So not only do you get this awesome print by Lord George of this badass Megatron with his badass skin, you get the fucking the skin, actual yeah. skin in it's the so game cool. it's made cool by skin, our dude. bro, by our broski. Okay. You get a certificate of authenticity, who gives a shit? And a bunch of other inside st stuff inside the game. They're giving away five SOCP ships, other exclusive skins. They're giving a, a metamorphosis BPC and a bunch of other stuff. Yeah. So what was the reaction of the EVE community? What do you think it was? That's it. Yeah. Listen, that's it. I I they don't there's not even any game time in here yeah. they didn't even give me an omega this sucks oh, why, why is this still exp oh my god and then and then the worst thing is so if you are an american and for the record ccp makes more money off of the united states players than anybody else you can ask anybody over there you can look at the tax returns europe is a big part of their income sure but north america's number one this is how much it costs an American to order the collector's edition. Sub it's one seventy five ninety nine. It's ten dollars shipping, ten dollars taxes, so it's one hundred and ninety four dollars and fifty cents. Now, unfortunately, unfortunately for our friends in the European Union, the governments of your countries are assholes and charge you thirty percent value added tax on everything and then the shipping is more because it's coming international because the stuff is being i guess assembled in the u.s so instead of it being a ten dollar shipping to me it's thirty dollars so you have to pay more money but the bulk of that is the taxes and that has nothing to do with ccp so why are you getting upset at the company because this is 175 dollars, but it ends up costing you totally like a 250 dollars 
with the shipping and the taxes. They don't control that. They don't control the taxes. I that's on that's on your governments. Go bitch at your government that that why are you charging me thirty percent, thirty eight percent value added tax on a on an item like this? This is ridiculous. I don't I, get it. I certainly can understand why people would be frustrated. I'm going to play the good cop in this situation. Uh, I understand why people can be frustrated. Uh, it is, it is, it, it actually is a pretty cool set, and I feel like a lot of the um, the people who have who are now raging about all oh, this, this is that all it is. I feel like a lot of that is cope, um, and I feel like there are a lot of people who really want to buy this, uh, and I wish. It was more readily available for more people. Um, I wish it was not quite as expensive, but you know, I understand. You listen, know, it is it is what it is. What and it this is, is to, and I'm not going to listen. I agree with you. Listen, when it comes down to this, is the 20th anniversary edition. There will be one of these ever. Okay, yeah. one of these ever. People have gone back in the past and bought the 10th anniversary edition again later for way more than it cost originally. It was about 150 bucks when that came out. And you know what was included in that shit? Some Iceland- random Icelandic board game that nobody would ever heard of. And a bunch of in-game items for games that don't exist. <laughs> and like a bunch of freaking prosthetic bullshit for Eve that would have been great for walking in stations. Well, that's gone now. So I'm glad you got your prosthetic arm from the 10th. And Jesus. this mystery code, which has done nothing but cause drama since it came out. And a Rifter a USB hub that we all have. Because it's been around and everybody has gotten one that wants one. I've given away dozens of these things at Eve meets in DC and over the, over the years. But to me, I I mean, and, and, and yes, there was a book, a book that has been sitting on my desk. It's right here, right, right here where my finger is pointing. It's been sitting on my desk. I have never opened it. Well, I've opened it and flipped through it. And then I put it down. I never read the thing. Okay. I was elected to lead, not to read. Uh, Exactly. I was elected to read. Lead, not, not to, to read. read. That's a good joke. But here's the thing. And for the folks that are complaining, the price is people are saying the price. Guys, listen, I, let me let me just show you. And I pulled this up because it pissed me off enough that I went and looked. This is this is the integral reality labs models. Now, I own a ton of these because I'm a ship model nerd. I will buy ship models until they're going out of style. Unfortunately, I did not buy every single one of these because that would have been cost prohibitive, but I bought like six of them. The most expensive of these models here, and these are not for sale anymore. If you want to get them, you got to get them off of eBay or something, was the Astero. I have an Astero. It's sitting over on top of my computer over here, my other, my Apple II GS computer over here. Mm-hmm. It was 114 bucks. It's eight inches long. That's the same size as the Megatron. So the ship model in there arguably is at least 100 bucks, if not 115 or more okay well look lloyd george here are the lloyd george prints he has his own website he sells all of this stuff here's the store pull this up the cheapest of any of these is like 20 20 pounds but most of these that are here look at this 150 pounds 150 pounds that one's 70 pounds out of stock 70 pounds 300 pounds, 300 pounds, 300 pounds, 300. I mean, these are ridiculously amount of money. These are, these are the originals, but I mean, they are, these are limited signed prints. This is what they are. That's what he, that's what he's selling. And some of these here are like $20, $30 for these signed prints. These are expensive. So I say, so you say, all right, so the art, so the art piece, the Megatron piece is maybe say 30 bucks. Okay. So between the model and the print itself, that's 140 or 50 bucks. Well, the plushie. Well, how much is a plushie running for, Briss? Well, I don't know, but guess what? Destiny 2. Bungie just put out a baby plush for Destiny 2 that's in pre-order. That's they're selling for $30. That's an eight-inch plush. This is this one's a six-inch. Okay, so maybe they sell it for $25. So there you go. Between those three physical items, it's already the cost of that thing. Plus, that doesn't include all of the in-game shit and the other poster and the pins. Well, what is, what do the pins run for? Well, uh, on the on the Eve website, you get a trick pin for six dollars. You get five pins. There you Jesus go. That's Christ. another thirty bucks. You really did. Your I mean, come on, guys. You know, you're I, listen. I and I I have no problem. How problems. many tabs do you have open right now? You guys, I have a bunch of. I always have a bunch of tabs <laughs> open. Listen, 
<laughs> this pissed me off this much because listen, I have no problems with anybody saying, oh, you know what? I think that's too expensive. I don't really want that. That's fine. Everybody has their own definition of what's expensive and what's not. For some people, 200 bucks is exorbitant and you can't, uh, that's rent money. I can't afford that. For other people, that's a weekend on the town. So it depends on who you are and what position you are in life. So I'm not going to, if you don't want to buy this because you think it's too expensive, that's fine. If you want to say it's overpriced, that's bullshit and wrong. And I just proved it. If you want to say this sucks that 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 they didn't make this in the EU because I have to pay this value added tax and I wouldn't have to pay if it was made here. Well, I'm sorry, but they made it in the US. Okay? And it's more expensive than it than it was 10 years ago. Well, inflation. I don't know what else to tell you. If you want to buy this thing and I am going to, you know, I I want to buy it. I know Marcus wants to buy it. I know plenty of people want to buy it. Everybody's going to pre-order this. And yeah, it's going to take a while for us to actually get the damn thing because they got to make all this stuff. They're not going to just, you know, buy a bunch of it and then hope they sell the things. So all this stuff is is pre-order type shit. But I think it's a good deal and it's got a bunch of good stuff in there. And if you don't think so, okay, but you're wrong. Yeah, I mean, I, I do think that it is, it sucks that it's, you know, as expensive as it is. Um you know, for the folks who who wanted some of this stuff and or maybe part of it, but wouldn't be able to get all of it, I understand. I, I get it. I definitely am going to be pre, be pre ordering it. Um, you know, just because, you know, it's like, yeah, I think it's expensive, even for like me, even for me, like it's pretty expensive to to get it. But it's you know, I've been playing Eve since I was like fucking fifteen years old. Like I miss the tenth anniversary. Uh, you know, we might not be alive, all of us in 10 years for the 30th anniversary. Uh, you know, who knows Speak for yourself, <laughs> the lich brisker ball will still be staggering around e- God damn e- right. online, but given the opportunity to have this one thing, this one time, um, I think I'm willing to like, you know, not eat out for six months to make this happen. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, and listen, I, you, you guys can call me a shill all you want. I don't care. You can ask, oh, did CCP He's buy out? Uh, did, did you? Did you? They buy out advertising space on the show? No. God, I just feel passionately about this because I'll be bluntly honest with you guys. I have told these guys over and 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 over again to please sell us fucking ship models. We want them. We will buy them. Yeah, we will. And so when. They did the Mixed Dimensions deal, which then became Integral Reality Labs and everything. I made it my job to buy a cup, a bunch of these models, every one every couple months, so Mrs. Brisk wouldn't scream at me. I've got like seven of them sitting over on my desk. I wish I could have afforded all of them. When you go into CCP headquarters, there's a wall that has all the models they of it. And that's just yeah. cool. I've been telling them forever, put ship models in. And at, this, and at the CSM Summit in January, they started talking about what do you guys want to see in the collect the 20th 20th anniversary collector's edition and i pounded the table and i said i want a fucking ship model there better be a ship model and they gave me a ship model so i will be damned if i am going to sit back and let you people shit on this when i got you a ship model i don't know if he pounded his fist but he definitely did say he wanted a ship model uh yeah it's a cool model too i wish it had the skin on it i you know that's the one thing like the the, i have a i have a a, um a Macarial over here mm-hmm. that I got. And I, I, one of the benefits of the Macarial is because it's angels. It already has a good, it has a good skin on it anyway. So I like that. And I wish that you could like pick, like I'm hoping someday maybe like integral reality labs or somebody like that will, will be willing to do the 3d printed stuff, but they'll let you pick the, pick the skin that you want to put on it. Yeah. Which would be cool. Cut all your print protocol is correct. I was disappointed to see that there are no Zernitra skins in this pack. Uh, despite my making it a campaign promise a year ago that I would get more Zernitra skins in the game, uh, I have not been successful in doing this. So I'm sorry. Right. I failed. Even here, you gotta keep working on it. I know. It's, it's Asher's tough, like a Quaif Megatron would be fucking amazing. Dot. Yeah. I know. Oh you'll get, gosh. you need to get, your, I mean, look, I would love a Quaif. I would love, I would love a police megathron mm-hmm. with the light that lit up and stuff that, that would be, be cool, cool as yeah. shit futility you do not have to make this model yourself you're not going to be stuck in the basement sniffing glue like i do oh, you'll yeah. be able to just put it on your desk it'll be nice so i'm happy that they did that and that made me happy 
Yeah. But anyway, if you don't want to buy the thing, that's fine. If you live in the EU, I'm sorry your your government suck and they're charging you too much in taxes. That's that's awful, and I feel bad for you. But that's not CCP's fault. And anyway, I mean, I guess the upside to that is they they've got healthcare, so you know. Right. Exactly. I'm sorry that your your models cost more, but <laughs> you know, at least you're you know taken care of. All right. <laughs> it's five o'clock. Wow, is it really? Holy shit. I'm one hour away from it being Mrs. Brisk's celebrated birthday. So I think it's probably time for us to get out of here. Do you have any final words to say for this week before we get out of here, Mr. Mark? Oh, man. No. Uh, I mean, I don't know. It's, uh, you know, we're in the summer slump. Doesn't really feel like a summer slump. Uh, I've been following the, those numbers that Jesse Trek puts out every so often about like how the player kind is doing. And uh, 2023, not too bad. You know, we're uh, we're all still out here. We're making it happen. It's not perfect, yep. but uh, we're, everything's okay. You know, we're all right. And for those of you watching, if you just got stuck with ads, I'm sorry. Ah, I'm God sorry. Damn. This is not Always. our desire. This is Twitch. Unfortunately, the way Twitch makes money is by taking shows that you want to watch that we put on for you and throwing a bunch of bullshit ads for Fortnite and other stuff on there instead of letting uh, letting us watch you. Now, there is a way around this. If you've subscribed to the stream and you pay the five bucks, you don't have to watch the ads. But I'm not going to suggest that you do that because I don't want to be called a shill. I'll do it. I don't give a fuck. Pay five dollars. Don't watch the ads. I don't know what the money goes to, but like the money goes to us providing all kinds of fun things for you on the stream. Oh, hell yeah. Then do that. That's what INN is here for. And I would just also like to point out that if you have not been watching INN, we've got a bunch of new shows. We've had a bunch of additional things been going on. We've had all kinds of giveaways and we've got a new dungeons and Dragons show that is coming on that the guys have been doing and i would like to make point out we are going to be doing a logitech giveaway during the dnd stream on july 21st so tune in and check it out (laughs) all right and we're going to give some stuff away i'm gonna yes i that's the thing i don't have a problem shilling other people's stuff i get upset shilling my own stuff (laughs) because but i mean look the bottom line is Every dollar that you that you guys put into to INN goes back into INN. And we do our best to make sure that we are providing you with the best Eve content every week. That's why this is the most watched Eve talk show and has been for years. True. And that has lasted before I was the host, while I was the host, and now with Mark as a host. Even, even when Mark is not wearing a shirt, this show still gets more viewers than any other Eve talk show. That because should tell you something. Sure. Think about that. Is it because of it or despite it? it no, it is. It's because of it. Oh, the, okay. I know All what right. people want. That's it. You know? That's they it. They want to see that. They want to see that schmeat. You know it. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, this has been the Meta Show for July the eighth, twenty twenty three. I am Brisker Ball. Join alongside Mark Resurrectus of Turbo Feeder Glory. Thank you all for watching us, and we look forward to seeing you next week. You stay classy, New Eden. <laughs>